The Concord Chamber Music Society's 20th anniversary season continues with a special performance by the Zuckerman Trio as violinist Pinkas Zuckerman, cellist Amanda Forsyth, and pianist Angela Chang perform music by Beethoven, Arensky, and Brahms, Sunday, November 17th at 3 p.m. at the Concord Academy Performing Arts Center. The program begins with the last of Beethoven's piano trios to be published, a set of variations on a popular early 19th century Viennese show tune titled I Am the Taylor Cockadoo. More widely known as the Cockadoo Variations, the history of this merry, essentially diversionary works composition is complicated and in many respects still unclear. Correspondence dating from 1803, when Beethoven was in the early stages of his middle, so-called heroic period, includes a description of the piece, while the work's sole surviving autograph was produced 13 years later. The confusion is compounded by the trio's publication date of 1824, the year Beethoven completed his Ninth Symphony. The work's stylistic diversity has raised the prospect that it was primarily composed near the beginning of the century and then subsequently revised. Its theme and nine of the ten variations that follow are rendered with a sunny, untroubled affect that's common in Beethoven's early music and brings to mind Papageno from Mozart's The Magic Flute. And yet the meditative darkness of the introduction and the unusual double fugue in the tenth variation are clear hallmarks of Beethoven's final creative period. The result is akin to a bright, simple portrait that's edged by deeper hues. The program continues with a performance of the trio number no. one in D minor by Anton Arensky. Although relatively few of his works would enter the standard repertoire, Arensky was an influential figure in late 19th century, early 20th century Russian music. Born in July of 1861, he studied with Rimsky-Korsakov at the St. Petersburg Conservatory before becoming a professor at the conservatory in Moscow, where he taught Rachmaninoff and Scriabin. During a period when a nationalist aesthetic based on Russian folk music was gaining increasing stature through works by Rimsky, Mazorsky, and Borodin, Arensky found himself compelled by the more cosmopolitan approach favored by Tchaikovsky, and his first piano trio directly reflects the influence of that master. Laid out in four movements, the piece was written as a memorial for the great Russian cellist Karl Davidov, who'd been the director of the St. Petersburg Conservatory during Arensky's student year. Tchaikovsky's Piano Trio, which memorialized the eminent pianist, conductor, and composer Nikolai Rubinstein, clearly served as a poetic model for this work. Both pieces include an elegy, employ a main theme that recurs throughout, and end uncompromisingly in minor. The whole of Varensky's trio is suffused with an abundant lyricism and a generosity of spirit that has made it one of his most often played works. <laughs> The program closes with a performance of Johannes Brahms' second piano trio. When Robert Schumann effectively launched the career of the 20-year-old Brahms in October of 1853 by publicly describing him as the musician most likely to assume the fallen mantle of Beethoven, he placed a burden upon the young musician that would slow his progress for most of the following two decades. But by the time Brahms completed this C major trio in 1882, he was a composer at the height of his powers, whose inherent tendency towards artistic self-criticism was no longer a barrier. This four-movement work embodies his ability to synthesize ostensibly contradictory elements in an entirely unique way. The forms he employs were the stock in trade of composers more than 100 years prior, and yet Brahms revitalizes them by obscuring their previously highly defined structural seams with subtle harmonic inflections and melodic elisions. Although the piano trio is a genre that implies a certain intimacy of expression, the sonic textures in this work have a truly orchestral impact, the result of unison and octave reinforcement of the melodic lines, and closely voiced piano chords being set with the hands occupying different ranges. The overall effect is one of epic fluency and assurance that makes this work one of Brahms' most boldly optimistic musical expressions. 
Hills. We hope you'll join us on Sunday, November 17th at 3 p.m. at the Concord Academy Performing Arts Center as the Concord Chamber Music Society welcomes the Zuckerman Trio for an afternoon of great music that's sure to be a highlight of the Society's 20th anniversary season. <laughs>